Something quite a few people have asked me over the years is, I'm visiting London and I'm a big fan of the underground. What would you recommend that I see? Well, that sounds like a good idea for a video, doesn't it? Thank you to everyone who suggested it, because here we are. So first of all, the underground is absolutely huge. You're probably not going to be able to see the whole thing. And that's before we've got onto things like the Docklands Light Railway and the Elizabeth Line. But the good news is that there's so much historically interesting and quirky stuff on the system that it's basically impossible not to see something just by riding the tube. That aside, here are some recommendations from me. First of all, let's talk museums. The London Transport Museum. This is the most obvious destination. Here you've got classic Metropolitan Railway stock, City and South London Railway stock, buses, trams, taxis, a 1938 tube stock car, posters and displays, models, it's a must-see for any transport fan. The closest station is Covent Garden, which is a classic Leslie Green station complete with a 1909 roundel. If you get the chance, Acton Depot is also worth a visit. This is basically the London Transport Museum's secret stash. All the stuff that's not glamorous enough for the main museum, but historically important nonetheless. It's only open a few weekends a year, but if your visit coincides with one of those weekends, definitely head to Acton Town for that. Acton Town itself, by the way, is a fine Charles Holden-style station. Again, if one is on when you visit, I recommend one of the museum's Hidden London tours. Any of them. They're all good. Basically, they're tours of disused stations and hidden areas of stations. The guides are all fantastic, and I learn a bunch of things I never knew every time I go on one. The Postal Museum. This isn't strictly to do with the underground, but if you're into the tube, you'll like this. It's a museum dedicated to the post office, but what's really cool is that it's centred on Mount Pleasant Station on the post office underground railway, and you can ride through the tunnels. The tunnels were mothballed on closure, so you can see abandoned platforms, sidings, even trains. You can see the workshop and get up close to the historic rolling stock. The nearest station is Farringdon. The Science Museum. Again, this one is less about the underground, but in the Making of the Modern World gallery you can see Puffing Billy. This is the oldest surviving steam locomotive in the world. There's also Columbine, the only Grand Junction railway locomotive to survive, and a whole lot of other cool transport stuff. Admission is free, nearest station is South Kensington. Okay, so that's museums. Next I'm going to recommend some rides you can take. I'm kind of working on the basis that if you're visiting, you're probably in central London, so most of these are based around there. The Waterloo and City Line. There are a lot of trips you could take, but I'm going to suggest the Waterloo and City Line. This is the shortest line. Actually, it's only about four minutes end to end, and only has two stations, Waterloo and Bank. It's just a quirky little line, as well as being one of the oldest deep-level tubes. At Bank, you have the City of London and its many historic sites, and at Waterloo, you have the South Bank and lots of nice little restaurants if you're feeling peckish. I would say that you should avoid the rush hour, though. This train does tend to get crammed with commuters, and that's no fun. The first tube ride. If you want to get really historical, why not ride the first ever tube line? That is the Metropolitan Line from Paddington to Farringdon. Or you could go the other way, it doesn't really matter. The point is that these are the oldest stations on the underground. When they were built, it was 1863 and everything was steam-powered. If you want to take it slow, you might consider getting off and looking around. Baker Street was the first to be opened and is chock-full of historic details. I'd also suggest getting off at King's Cross St Pancras and looking at, well, King's Cross and St Pancras, two of the most beautiful stations in London. Paddington and Farringdon are also worth looking at in themselves. Once you've got to the end of your journey, might I suggest that to get back to your starting point, you take the Elizabeth Line to see how far things have come in the past 161 years. Riding at the front on the DLR. The Docklands Light Railway isn't the underground, but I kind of consider it an honorary tube line. And what I suggest to you is that you take a ride on it. If you can, get a seat at the front. It's a driverless train, and everyone knows that that's the best place to sit. 
It's a railway that's part underground, part elevated, and parts of it run over historic infrastructure. You can see the remains of the old docks, but also the shiny skyscrapers of the new docklands. As to where you go, that's up to you. Canary Wharf is pretty cool. At Cutty Sark, you've got, well, the Cutty Sark. At Royal Victoria, you can get the cable car over to North Greenwich and get the Jubilee Line back into town. But for real train nerd cred, I suggest going to Greenwich and then riding to London Bridge on a national rail train. That takes you along the London and Greenwich Railway, London's first passenger railway and one of the first commuter railways in the world. You'll pass through Deptford, the oldest station in London, you'll pass through the abandoned remains of Spa Road, London's first terminus, and you'll finish at London Bridge, the oldest surviving terminus in London. The Epping Ongar Railway. This is a bit of an advanced one, and it's definitely an all-day thing. It's also very much not in central London, so good job me on sticking to that rule. What you do is this. You get the central line all the way out to Epping. This is a long journey, but along the way you can see some rather lovely old Great Eastern Railway stations. At Epping, a classic bus picks you up and takes you to North Weald, and here you can catch a steam train to Onga. This line also used to be part of the central line until 1994, so it's a chance to ride an abandoned tube line. Plus, it's a pretty well set up heritage railway in itself, and who doesn't love a steam train? Only monsters. If you have time, you might also want to stop in at the signalling museum at Epping Station, where you can look around a disused and restored London transport signal cabin. When I went, they also took me inside this shunting loco they have, which was pretty fun. You can also reach the Epping Onga Railway from Shenfield, if that's easier for you. There are other heritage railways within easy reach of London, although again, allow the whole day to visit them. You might look at the Bluebell Railway, the Didcot Railway Centre, the Mid Hants Railway, the Amberley Museum, the Spa Valley Railway, the London Museum of Water and Steam, or the Kempton Park Steam Museum. If you fancy a trip to the seaside, Volks Electric Railway in Brighton is the oldest electric railway in the world. I do advise that you check online before visiting heritage railways and museums because they don't run every day. So, I hope that gives you some ideas to be going on with. But one of the things I love about railways in London is that they're simultaneously old and new. You might be riding on a comfortable modern train on a railway that's over 150 years old. So really, just by riding trains around London, you'll see lots of history. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this tourist-friendly tale from the Tube. This was aimed at people from outside of London, but for those of you in London, what did I miss? What would you recommend a train-mad visitor go to look at in this fair city? Let me know in the comments section. I would like as ever to thank my donors on Ko-fi, on Patreon, and here on YouTube for your support. You are the Baydecker to my suitcase. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.